everyone welcome you all to my channel if this is your first time of coming to my channel thanks a lot don't forget to give this video a thumbs up like share and subscribe so in today's video we are going to be making a simple video on how to cut one shoulder pencil balloon gown okay and what are the basic measurements required shoulder measurement bust measurement waist measurement hip and our gown length so our shoulder is 14 14 divided by 2 we have 7 our bust is 38 38 plus 2 divided by 4 plus 1 we have 11 inches our waist is 32 32 plus 2 divided by 4 plus 2 we have 10.5 our hip is 40 40 plus 2 divided by 4 plus 1 we have 11.5 and our gown length is 36 now for you to know your measurement for your gown length you have to deduct where you are going to have your balloon from your main sleeve so let's say my balloon you are going to deduct where you want your balloon like how many inches you want for your balloon from your main sleeve so let's say i want the balloon to be about three inches which is can be more than it just depends on what you actually want to achieve so you go ahead and deduct three inches from here we have 33 now 33 plus your sewing allowance that is two inches plus two inches we have 35 inches so for our pencil gown we are going to cut 35 inches and for our balloon we are going to cut three inches plus the sewing allowance three inches plus your sewing allowance we have five inches for our balloon so those are the measurements required in order for you to achieve this so first we are going to start with pattern before we now dive straight into the fabric and with me here i have my pattern paper i have my pattern paper I hope you guys can see it now one thing about this pattern paper is is actually very very long is about 60 inches long guys about 60 inches so when you are dealing with dresses that have long length i recommend you to get this pattern paper and of course this pattern paper are available at our store it's actually very very long and it comes in a bundle so now join us on facebook to designs where we also put out illustration and also visit our website i'm going to put down the details at the 35 so this is where we have 35 this is our gown length Basic measurements. What are the basic measurements? Our shoulder to half hole, nine and a half. Shoulder to bust, ten. Shoulder to under bust, thirteen and a half. Shoulder to waist, seventeen and a half. So from our waist, we mark six inches for upper hip, and we mark eight inches for lower hip. Now, what do you use your upper hip for your upper hip is to enable you know where your dart is going to end and your lower hip is where you are going to mark your basic hip measurement okay so i'll go ahead and connect the lines together it, we are going to go ahead and mark our zip allowance because this is the back block okay so we mark our zip allowance which is one inch in connect the lines together which is four inches mark four inches i'll connect it together now the next thing we are going to do now is to mark our shoulder measurement our shoulder measurement which is seven inches is 10.5 no our bust is 11 our waist is 10.5 and our hip now you can see that our dart stops at the upper hip that is the 
process of marking your upper hip and your lower hip. So your dad stops at the upper hip. Why on the lower hip is where we are going to take our hip measurement now, which is 11.5. Now, because it's a pencil gown, we are going to deduct inches from it towards your top um, gown length. So the number of inches you deduct determine how pencil your gown effect is going to come out. So for the upper hip, we mark 11 and a half. I'm going to mark 10 inches here. Which means that I deducted one and a half inches for my pencil gown. So I'll connect it together. So this is what it looks like. Now I'll go in with my ampo comb and connect my ampo together. make it of three inches i'm only going to indicate where i have three inches and don't forget that this is one shoulder okay so i'll go ahead and cut this out once you have your dad of course this is going to have a bustier effect so we are going to get our bustier effect now extend this dark line that line extend it up to your shoulder on your shoulder mark five to five and a half inches i'm going to take five and a half inches now connect it to your that connect it to your that hope you guys can see close up the that this way So if you need training on how to draft like that, your pattern drafting, you can register for our classes to have detailed class on pattern drafting. So once you're done with that, you now mark your shoulder measurement, which is 7 inches. Mark your bust, that bust, mark half inch on your under bust. On your under bust, mark half inch on are under bust mark half inch on both sides now go in with your pattern master which is available let me open this up so you guys can see what i'm doing so you connect it this way so you have like another form of that now towards your hip you are going to use the in this inner part of your pattern master to get that curve and that is why pattern masters are compared to the pattern jackson class so you can see this is what we have so i'll go ahead and close it up okay let me just take a measurement so you guys can see it clearly so for the bust i have 11 inches for my waist i have 10.5 and for my hip, you can see we are marking the hip on the lower hip. We have 11 and a half inches. Now, because it's pencil, we took away one and a half inches. So I'll mark 10 inches for my gown length. I will go in and connect it together. So this is what it looks like okay this is what it looks like now i will now go in with my arm o curve to connect my arm o of course for the front arm o for the front arm o you can see the way i place the part um arm o curve which makes it to go in a little bit so that is what you have so by the time you close your dart this is what it looks like okay so I will go ahead and go in and trace this out. That's basically what I just want to do. So I'm going to trace. I'm tracing it out towards this arm O. I'm not going to follow the arm O curve. So I'll just trace it. Indicate where my neckline, my arm O starts.
start from and I'll just trace it all the way up. Chasing it out, this is what you are going to have. Complete back measurement. Now, the next thing you are going to do is to determine what part you want your off shoulder to fall. What part do you want your off shoulder to fall? And that is why, if you, if you look at this pattern carefully, we have our arm O curve here, and on this part, we cut out a straight part so that we can use this part to get our off shoulder. We can use this other part to get our off shoulder. So we've gone ahead to indicate where we want our neckline to start from. The next thing you are going to go ahead is to determine how deep you want your neckline to be. How deep you want your neckline to be. So I'm going to go ahead and use about six inches. It actually depends on how deep you want it to be basically. So we have six inches. Now this is where we have the off shoulder part. This is where we have the off shoulder. So let's label this is our off shoulder and this is our normal shoulder, okay? Now for this part of the off shoulder, we mark how many your shoulder measurement on this off shoulder part. Don't forget that one inch here is for our zip allowance. More off shoulder to start from. So on that line, mark your shoulder measurement, which is seven inches. Mark your shoulder measurement, which is seven inches, on the line where you want your off shoulder to start from. So this is where we want our off shoulder to start from, and we've indicated our shoulder to be seven inches. I hope you guys can see it to be seven inches. Now you will connect this your shoulder to your arm o, making use of a slant curve. Making use of a slant curve. So you can see you've gotten this slant shape for your off shoulder. Now for the neckline, this is where our neck lines we marked for our neckline. So you just go ahead and connect it this way. Connect it to where you have your measurements, okay? This is how it's going to look like. So we'll go ahead and cut out our off shoulder. This is what it looks like. You can see your normal shoulder and towards this part, you can see where your off shoulder falls. So this is just... Now, since we've cut it out, what we want to achieve is one shoulder. And our one shoulder only deals with the upper part of the block. It doesn't have any effects with the lower part. So we set aside this lower part. Show you how to get the off shoulder of the front block when we are cutting the fabric. Okay, so you guys can... For the front block, you're having like a center fold. The, the reason why the back block is easier to get on pattern is because you are having two pieces for the back block but for the front block where you have one piece so that you guys can understand it better I will do that when I'm transferring my pattern to the fabric so I fold my fabric into two now for this center fold of the front place it the next thing I'll do now is to go ahead and cut this piece. Make sure you pin it down. You can see it's not folded into two because we have different neckline. So I'll go ahead and cut this out. You can see what it looks like. Now we'll take the second piece and we'll go ahead and cut it out it block you can see your neckline coming out this way and you can see it so we set this aside this is where we are going to have the effect of the off shoulder and the effect of the one shoulder so just fold your fabric into two and then you cut out like a box we have this box shape so we are going to open our center front this way open your center front so when you open your center front take 
chop this piece into two and we open it up into two we have one piece this way this is the center front and we have the second piece this way and we said our off shoulder is on the left hand side our off shoulder is on the left hand side while our normal shoulder is on the right hand side so this is our shoulder you place this this way and then you cut out the shape see this is where we have our normal arm oh now on the left hand side let me set this aside where we have our off shoulder this is where we have our off shoulder so you place your tape measure so this is where we want to have our off shoulder what are you going to do first you determine how many inches off you want it to be how many inches off you want it to be so we are going in with about five inches off so this is where we want our off shoulder to start from at this point swing we want our off shoulder to start from this point we've indicated our off shoulder and by the time you cross check it on the fabric you can see you have the same five inches on your fabric so this is where we want our off shoulder to be now you go ahead and go ahead and cut out your bustier shape we are just going to we are five inches off we have five inches off and our arm o is nine and a half inches this is where we have nine and a half inches i hope you guys can see it so we we'll just go in with our pattern master and slope it cut it out that is the off shoulder shape so by the time we take our fabric this way this is where you have your normal shoulder now you are just going to like connect this together with this neckline so you just draw out the shape to meet out with this point so it's very simple basically cut out this part also in the middle block so this is what it looks like so this part will give you your normal shoulder and this part will give you your off shoulder my sleeve to be on the off shoulder part i want my sleeve to be on the off shoulder and my normal shoulder there's no sleeve on it so i'll fold my fabric into two i will measure my sleeve length this is for the off shoulder sleeve part off shoulder sleeve so we took away five inches I will mark how many inches I want for my sleeve, which is 10 inches, plus 2 inches for my sewing allowance. I have 12 inches. You can see that I placed the 5 inches that we took off. I placed the 5 inches that we took off outside the measurement. Okay, you can see the 5 inches is off, and it's from these 5 inches you take your other measurement. So I'll mark my measurement now my round sleeve is 12 divided by 2 i have 6 and i add my sewing allowance which is one and a half inches now to get the arm o for the off shoulder to get the arm o for the off shoulder we took away five inches and our arm o is nine and a half inches this helps you to know your arm o line now the five inches you took away mark it at this point this is the five inches we took away mark it at this point and then you connect it this way with a slant shape also so mark your round sleeve this is my round sleeve measurement so i'll go ahead and connect this together i hope you understand off shoulder part of the sleeve now for the balloon side we said our balloon length is five inches so i'll just fold my fabric make it
making use of the measurements just fold it and cut it out and the more full it is so there's not like a basic measurement it just depends on how full you want it to be so i'll just go ahead and cut out all the rest using that measurement of its sides so the back block and the neckline and this other side of it front block now so I'll be going in with my wording okay because this is bustier so I'll be going into my wording because we have to fix this in Now it has like a shining part and a dark part. So your shining part to the fabric and you go ahead and iron it, stitching it from the down. Just follow the shape you have at this part when you are sewing, just follow the shape. So you can see the way it came out. So for this other part too, so you are doing the same the shining parts to the fabric shining parts to the fabric and you press it down take the front block now after joining the interface together neckline we open and top stitch it everywhere aside the off shoulder parts and the lower part so i can be able to turn it the middle block now we fold it that is to fix our dart fold it into two you mark four inches for the dart and you mark six inches so my dart is going to end at four inches so i'll mark four inches and for the length i'll mark four inches because i want the dart to be short so i'll hold it at this point and i'll stitch it i'll hold it at this point and i'll hold it at this point also. and join this upper block to it so that we can have like a complete front these two dots must align together I'll be using 20 inches for my zip. So I'll fix my zip from here. So I'll just fold each block like this into two. So my that's 13 and a half. That is around my underbust to my waist. Go ahead and fix my zip. This front block where you have your shoulder is also the same place and mark my measurements. What to do now is to fix in our sleeve. Okay, so I'm going to fold the lower part of it, which we added our sewing allowance to. I'll go ahead. We also fold this upper part sleeve. And sleeve measurement which is six inches we'll go ahead and join them together to give us a long piece seen it So 
so this is what our one shoulder pencil gown with balloon or pleats at the lower side looks like and you can see the balloon effect at the lower side and you can see our one shoulder so if you find this video very educative don't forget to give this video a thumbs up like share and subscribe i'll see you guys in my next video bye